Girl 6 comes out. Uh, so I, I basically got sent back here with a grade of incomplete. Well, what's left to do then? Uh, mostly community things, really. Uh, people are still fighting over whether uh, Pearl 6 uh, should have a different name, and some people are upset over Camellia. Camellia? Yeah. The, the butterfly who we hired in Spokesbug for Pearl 6. Some people think she's too young for the job and isn't taking the job seriously enough. Um, or maybe they're just afraid of bugs. But actually, Camellia serves a very important purpose, you see. The reason humans are intelligent is because of what we call neoteny. Um, instead of relying on instinct the way animals do, humans have instead learned to keep playing like a child into adulthood. This allows us to be creative even when we are adults because it's fun. So, you see, while I designed Camellia to present a friendly face to women and children, I also designed her to flush out of hiding those poisonous people who think adults should be boring. I do not believe that professionalism and playfulness are mutually exclusive. If you think Camellia is unprofessional and ugly, you're just revealing your own unprofessionalism and ugliness, in my opinion. So, you see, I'm a little bit sneaky. I've set it up so you can't win the argument, because Camellia is designed to drive you away from those of us who want our jobs to be fun. Uh, variants of the butterfly logo are, are perfectly fine uh, for various purposes on uh, different websites, uh, just as uh, the uh, not every Linux website has tux the penguin. Some of them have red hats, some of them have strange blobs. Uh, but still, even though we allow variation, Camellia is the face and personality at the center and will remain as the spokesbug on Pearl.org. So, darn it, if you don't like Camellia, you can just fork off. Yeah, fork off! I'll get that at six.
you to tell people that Perl 5 and Perl 6 are completely different languages and Perl 6 is someday going to wipe Perl 5 off the map as a viable platform. I want you to tell people that Perl 5 and Perl 6 are essentially the same language underneath. They're sister languages and they will both be, uh, grow to a ripe old age and uh, be useful forever. Uh, I want you to prepare people for war. I want you to prepare people for peace. In other words, you want us both to lie. And no, I want you to both to tell the truth. Wait a minute, wait a minute. This is one of those logic puzzles, isn't it? People know that I always tell the truth, and Deb always lies, so you want people to believe that everything will work out fine, whether they believe me or disbelieve him. Now hold on. Wait just one damn minute. That can be arranged, you know. And uh, longer periods of damnation are also available for those who are sufficiently motivated. No, I mean, I could just say the opposite and agree with you. Happy, 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 joy, joy, joy. And then people would believe that the apocalypse is coming. What do you use that word? I was using it in the popular sense. You know, we like apocalypse. Too. The book of Revelation has more good angels than bad angels, after all. When I use the word apocalypse, I, I mean it in its original sense of a revealing, a, a revelation, a clue, as in get up. Uh, what we're seeing here is the first sequence of how it will be someday. It's just a vision of the future, or many possible futures, some good, some bad. The bad futures are unevenly distributed. So are good ones? Not sure. All futures we can imagine are unevenly distributed, including the exact future, future each one of us will actually have. But you forgot the front of that saying. The future is here today. It's just unevenly distributed. The future is here today for some definition of here, and not for other definitions. And that's the crucial bit. You can be at the wrong here, looking under the wrong lamppost. You can not have the future distributed to you if you're in the wrong place or if you're turning over the wrong rock. However, I think this place here at this conference is one of those places where the future is being distributed a little bit early. And this community, the folks sitting out there listening, are the sorts of folks to whom the future is being distributed first. And they're not just passive recipients, they're active. Now, as figments of my imagination, you, Dev, may not have free will, and you, Angie, may not either. Uh, but I believe that everyone real in this room has free will, as do all creatures who are created in God's image. That means the future depends on us. We help choose the future. So it's important to see all the possibilities as we go forward. Pro 6 could be bringing on a bloody revolution. Pro 6 could also just be another delightful step forward from colonialism to independence. Uh, it's you folks in this room and people like you who have to decide how violent or how peaceful that future will be. So each of you choose to work toward the future of your choice. Now that's really scary. Reality has always been that scary in case you haven't noticed. Well, there you have it, folks. And reality is scary because you guys are scary. So go out and be disruptive in the nicest possible ways. Be grievers. But be good grievers. Good grief, Charlie Brown. <laughs> yes, be good grievers. Thank you all for listening to us today and have a great conference discovering all the ways in which Pearl is being reborn in this Renaissance.